In the previous video, we have established that given a subjective morphism pi between irreducible f1 varieties, we will always have that the dimension of every fiber is going to be greater than or equal to dimension of y minus dimension of x. And we claim that equality happens for the fibers over most point p in x. That is, equality happens over a non-empty open subset of x. So in this video, we're gonna construct a non-empty open subset of u of x, such that for every point p in u, the dimension of the fiber over p is gonna be equal to dimension of y minus dimension of x. Now, since we have established that this dimension is at least equal to dimension of y minus dimension of x, it suffices now to construct a set u such that for every point p in the set u, the dimension of the fiber over p is less than or equal to the dimension of y minus dimension of x. And that is what we will do, but before diving into the proof, we need to recall an algebraic characterization of dimension. So how do we characterize dimension algebraically? Well, we usually like to think of the dimension of x as the transcendence degree of its function field. Well, but be careful, this definition only works if x is irreducible, because the general notion of function field is only defined for irreducible variety x. But we can generalize this idea to an arbitrary variety x. Recall that by Noether normalization, we know that the coordinate ring of x is going to be algebraic over some polynomial ring, and geometrically that corresponds to a map from x to some affine space with finite fibers. And as we've mentioned, the dimension of the fiber has to be less than or equal to the difference between the dimension of x and the dimension of this affine space. So since finite fiber have dimension 0, we see that dimension of x must be equal to dimension of this affine space. So the dimension of x should be equal to the number d, such that the coordinate ring of x is algebraic over a polynomial ring in d variables. Putting it differently, viewing this as elements of the coordinate ring of x, we can see that this d is the maximal number of algebraically independent elements in this coordinate ring. Every other element must be algebraically dependent on this xi. Thus, we can think of the dimension of x as the maximal number of algebraically independent functions in the coordinate ring of x. Now, equipped with that, let us try to construct a set of point p such that the dimension of fibers over p is less than or equal to dimension of y minus dimension of x. Now, observe that since pi is subjective, the induced map on coordinate rings must be injective. This is because any regular function f on x that pulls back to zero must vanish on the image of pi, which is the whole of x. So f itself must originally be zero. Thus pi star is injective, and we can think of the coordinate ring of x as a subring of the coordinate ring of y. Now suppose that the dimension of x is n. This implies that we should be able to find n algebraically independent functions x1 to xm in the coordinate ring of x, which could also be viewed as functions on y via the pullback map. Now, if the dimension of y is equal to n, then we should be able to extend the set xi to a set of n algebraically independent regular functions over y. Thus, we can think of the coordinate ring of y as being generated over this xi and yj by some element uh, z1 to zs that are algebraically dependent on this xi and yj. Now to compute the dimension of the fiber over any point p, we need to look at the um, maximum number of algebraically independent elements in the coordinate ring of this fiber. And what is the coordinate ring of this fiber? Well, if we let mp be the ideal of regular functions on x vanishing at p, then we see that a function vanish on the fiber over p if and only if it's the pullback of some function vanishing on p. So the functions vanishing on the fiber are exactly pullbacks of functions vanishing at p. Now, since we are identifying kx with a subring of ky via this pullback map, we might simplify notation and think of this as the 
radical of the ideal generated by mp inside ky. Well, that sounds a bit more complicated than it should. Let's give another description of this coordinate ring. If we think of this x1, xm as giving coordinates on the variety x, and let's say the coordinate of p under this xi is p1, pm, then we can obtain the coordinating of the fiber by plugging in pi for xi. Because this xi function just pull back to pi on the fiber. Now the dimension of this fiber is going to be less than or equal to n minus m. If we cannot have any set of algebraically independent elements in here of length greater than n minus m. Note that the pi is a constant, so this is really just the polynomial ring in the variable yi's and zj's. Here you might say, well, didn't we assume that each of these z-alpha is going to be dependent, algebraically dependent, on this yi's? So then how can this ring ever get more algebraically independent element than this ring? Well, you have to be careful there, because it's not true that each of the z-alpha is algebraically dependent on the yi's. Recall that each of the z-alpha is algebraically dependent on this whole set, this set containing x1 to xm and yn plus 1 to yn. For each z-alpha, we have an algebraic dependence relation relating z-alpha to this xi and yj. The problem is, when we plug in a point p1, pm in here, this might no longer be a dependence relation between the yi's and z alpha. That could happen if, for example, all of the coefficient of these yi cancel, so this expression contains only z alpha. Note that since these yi's are algebraically independent, we cannot have the other possibility, which is that the coefficient of the z alpha cancel, and this gives a relation among the yi. But okay, as we see, as long as not all of the coefficients of yi here cancel, then we do have algebraic dependence um, of each of these z-alpha on the yi's, and thus this ring cannot have more than n minus m algebraically independent element. So for which p can we guarantee that not all the coefficients of the yi vanish? Well, we can think of this f alpha as polynomials with coefficient in the x. So for h z alpha, the condition that the specialization of this relation to a point p, the condition that that specialization is trivial, is equivalent to the vanishing of certain of these coefficients, and that cut out some closed subset v alpha of x. If we let u be the complement of the union of all such v alpha, then for every point p in u, this relation remains non-trivial. This z alpha remains algebraically dependent on this yi's, and thus this ring cannot have more than n minus m algebraically independent element. This means that the dimension of the fiber has to be less than or equal to n minus m. But since we've already established in the previous video that this dimension must be at least equal to dimension of y minus dimension of x, this implies that on u, the dimension of every fiber is actually equal to dimension of y minus dimension of x.